In this video we will learn how to read type declarations in C. This is an example of a type declaration in C and hopefully by the end of this video you'll be able to read something like this and make sense of it. So first of all let's look at the components of a C declaration. A declaration in C will be composed of the following elements. First of all you will have one basic type and I list some of the basic types right here and you could also have unsigned, signed combinations with these ones where applicable. So this will be one basic type that you will always find in a declaration. Then you could have some derived types such as the pointer, the array, or the function within your declaration and when you're going to encounter any of these elements or derived types this is how you're going to read them. For the pointer, you will say pointer2 because it will always be followed by something within the declaration that the pointer will point to. So you say pointer2 when you encounter this asterisk. Um, when you encounter the array, you'll say array of, and then we will specify what comes after based on the declaration. And then for the function, you'll say function returning, and then you'll say what does it return. So these are the derived types. Then you could also have within your declaration some grouping parentheses. So these are parentheses that either just help to see things more clearly, you could have as many as you want, or sometimes they also achieve a purpose in terms of ordering things the way you want. We will look at how grouping parentheses are used in declarations. And then finally we could also have some identifiers. We will always have one identifier that will be the variable name and then we might have other identifiers as well. And in addition to these basic elements, you might also have some type qualifiers like constant and volatile, and we will also learn how to read these in the declaration. So to actually read C declarations, what we will use are precedence rules. Just like we have precedence rules for arithmetic operators, we will also have precedence rules right here which will dictate the way we read the C declaration. So here they are. Grouping parentheses have a higher priority than postfix operators and the postfix operators are the two derived types that we had seen earlier, the array and the function. And the prefix operator comes in last in terms of priority and the, and the only prefix operator we have here is the pointer. So this is the order and this will dictate how we read C declarations. So the only steps you actually need to memorize and remember are the following. And they're very simple. They actually boil down to this step number two. So first off, you always start with the variable name. And if you have more than one identifier, this will be the leftmost identifier. You start with the variable name. You say the variable name. So if the variable name is foo, you will say foo is dot 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 and then you will continue as follows. You'll continue using this rule which is derived from the precedence we had just defined here. You will always go right when you read. You will go right when you can and go left in your reading of the declaration when you must. And when do you have to, so you always go right, you look at the declaration, it's going to be it's going to have a bunch of elements as we had said earlier. You start with the variable name and then you move right all the times, except when you must. And when you must is defined by these three things. When you hit a closing parenthesis, when you hit a closing parenthesis that means we're trying to group something. So you have to move left from where you are. After you encounter a function, once you encounter a function you will want to find the return type. So you have to go back, you have to go left. And we will see this in practice. And also when you reach the end of the declaration, when you reach the end of the declaration, the semicolon, you will have to start going backwards and eat up all the elements before in the declaration because you've reached the end of going right. So you always go right when you can and you go left when you must. This is the rule you memorize when reading C declarations. And then finally, once you're done, you always end with the basic type. The basic type, which will be at the beginning, you will end with it. So these are the rules that you follow when reading C declarations. Now in terms of dealing with constant and volatile, here's the, what you do. Once you encounter constant and volatile, if they are next to a basic type, 
that we had seen earlier, such as int, short, etc., etc., if they're right next to it, so before it or after it, then this constant volatile will apply to the type itself, to the basic type. Otherwise, they will apply to the pointer immediately to its left of constant or volatile. And we'll see this in practice. So now that we have these rules, and of course they all boil down to this one as we said, you go right when you can, you go left when you must, which this statement is derived from the precedence rules right here. Let's go and look at some examples. So let's start off with this one. So the first thing we said, we look at the variable name. We start off with the variable name. Here it's foo. So we say foo is, then we move right when you can, you move left when you must. So we move right in this case, and then we hit array. So we say foo is an array of seven, in this case because we have seven. So we say array of, as we said, right? When you hit an array, you always say array of seven. And then now that we've reached the end of the declaration, we must start moving left. So we move left to this pointer. So we say an array of seven pointers two, don't forget the two, remember we said when you encounter a pointer, you say pointer two, and then we keep on moving left because we're done reaching, uh, we're done with the right elements, so we say pointer two, pointer, and then you end with the basic type, too long. So like I said, don't forget the two here. So foo is an array of seven pointers to pointers to long. Now let's go to the second example. This one is a little more complicated. Again, we start with the variable name. So foo is, put is, then you move right here when you can, and then you hit the array. So foo is an array of, and then you keep moving right in this case, right? You move right when you can, of an array of eight, right, since we have eight, now we hit a closing parenthesis, and this says that we're trying to group something, so we start moving left in this case, and now we hit this pointer, so we say of eight pointers, and then we keep moving left in this case, because we have to finish this grouping, this group, so we say foo is an array of, array of eight pointers to, pointer two, don't forget, pointer, now we're done with this, then we go right, we start moving right when we can, so we hit a function, two, pointer two, function, right? Now what we, when we hit a function, we want to get the return type, right? So this is one of the conditions which say we must start going left, so we go left and consume one element here, pointer. So to function, returning, remember when you said you hit a function, you have to put the returning. So returning a pointer to... Okay, now we are done. This was also another condition for going left. We're done with this group. We come back going right. We hit this element, the array, to an array. Now we're done with this statement. We're done with this declaration. So we've reached the end of it. Now we start moving left and consume all the elements to the left. We come back to this one. So an array of, don't forget the of once you reach an array, of pointer two, and then finally we end with the basic type, to care. So you see how foo is an array of array of eight pointers to pointer to function returning a pointer to an array of pointer to care. So this is just an example to stretch our limits. It, I don't think you will use something like that in code, but this is just to make sure that you actually understand how to read C declarations. So let's look at this example as well. So we start with the variable name, next is, and then right when we go to the right, we hit a closing parenthesis, so we have to start going back and get everything in this grouping, so we get the pointer. So next is a pointer, two, then we keep going right, we hit function here, two, a function, returning, always put returning after function, then we're done with all the elements to the right. Now we start consuming elements to the left, returning a pointer to, and now we hit this constant keyword. And since the constant is not immediately around the basic type, so it's not to the right of the basic type nor to the left, it go, it's going to apply to the pointer. 
immediately to its left. So we're going to say is to a constant pointer to a, and then we end with the basic type, to a character. Now let's move on to this final example. Now we have two identifiers you see here, but the variable name is this one, the leftmost identifier. So C is, we move right, an array of, and then 10. Then we hit a closing parenthesis, so we get a left element right here to end this group of 10 pointers. Then we keep moving right. And this is an opening parenthesis, meaning a function. So 10 pointers to functions this is the argument that the function takes since we hit a function we have to go back to get the return type so this function is going to take this as an argument and you could put it somewhere so I'll just put something like here where you could put what the argument this function is going to take but you also have to say returning so we go left a pointer now that we've reached the end of our declaration, so we just come back here and we end with our basic type, turning a pointer to a character. It's a pointer to right here. C so is an array of 10 pointers to function, taking this argument, returning and returning a pointer to a character.